Hello everybody, this is 8-Bit Flashback, and today I'm reviewing a product called Classic to Magic, and this allows you to play actual Super Nintendo cartridges on your Super Nintendo Classic Edition, along with being able to play thousands and thousands of games from a USB flash drive. Here's a quick look at the packaging, and what you get inside of it is the Classic to Magic itself, along with a micro USB cable. On the top of the case here is where your games are gonna plug in, and this will accept Super Nintendo games and Super Famicom games. There's also the USB slot where you're gonna be plugging in your USB flash drive, along with some LED light indicators. Then on the back of the device, there's gonna be a micro USB port where that power plugs in, and then that other USB connection is actually gonna to connect to your Super Nintendo Classic Edition. So that's gonna plug in just like this, and then your main power is gonna plug into the Classic to Magic. And here's a quick look at the cartridges loading, and it's not real satisfying when you put the cartridges in the slot like it is when you put it in the official Super Nintendo. It's kind of hard to tell when they're all the way seated. But I did get used to it after a while, and it's not a big deal at all. And in order for this to work, you will have to download some files from the Classic to Magic website and put those on your thumb drive or flash drive, whatever you want to call it, so it can install the necessary software. And here's the Classic to Magic website where you can find all the info you need, and I'll make sure to post a link down below. So the initial setup for the Classic to Magic supports 29 different emulators, but you can add more. If you're familiar with how to use Hack Chi, then it'll be real easy to add extra emulators because the software that the Classic to Magic uses is compatible with Hack Chi. So the initial setup is fairly easy to do and it has a very detailed step-by-step -step guide. And if you're interested in getting one of these, I did get one from sky-3ds.com and I'll make sure to post a link down below. So I have everything already set up and pre-installed. So let's go ahead and boot this up and take a look at my home screen. So now on my home screen, I got some new folder icons instead of just having that regular 21 games being displayed. So if you notice here, there's a Hack Chi folder, and that's because I used Hack Chi CE to add some ROMs to this. And there is two different ways you can add ROMs to this. You can either add ROMs to the ROMs folder, or you can use Hack Chi CE. So on the left of the screen is my USB flash drive, and if you want to add ROMs to this without using Hack Chi, then you want to navigate to the ROMs folder. Now this method does work for the 29 supported emulators, but it is a little picky. First off, you want to make sure it's not in an archive or a zip folder. You want to go ahead and open that and extract that and just put the game in the ROMs folder. Also, I found out that if the game name has any special characters in it, then you sometimes get errors when you go to load the game. So you're best off just renaming the game and taking all the special characters out. You can also add artwork inside this folder, but it has to have the same exact name as the game. So when you use this method to install ROMs, what happens is when you boot up your Super Nintendo with the flash drive plugged in, it automatically imports these ROMs into specific folders for each emulator. But my preferred method for adding ROMs would be using HackCHI-CE, and it's much easier in my opinion. And here's a couple tips for you if you're going to use HackCHI-CE to add ROMs to your flash drive. When you're adding Nintendo 64 games on the command line, you're going to have to change it to read N64, otherwise the emulator will not read it, and it'll just boot to a black screen and then back to your home menu. And you might have to do this for other emulators, but I only run into issues with two of them, Nintendo 64 and Atari 2600. With the Atari 2600 names, it was automatically named those as bin, and I had to change that to A26 for those games to load properly. So after you add all the games you want, you can download the artwork automatically, then export games at the bottom, and select your USB flash drive to add the ROMs to. For your cartridge-based games, all you have to do is put your Super Nintendo cartridge in the slot, then boot up your Super Nintendo, and then a cartridge icon will appear right here. So let's go ahead and test out Super Off-Road. And I'd also like to mention that on my home screen, I do have some custom music. So for the people out there that are interested in doing a custom music hack via Hack Chi, it is compatible. And the Hack Chi that they recommend you use with their software would be the CE version, and I'll make sure to post a link to that down below. So this cartridge is playing just fine with no issues. But one thing I did notice is it is converted to a virtual ROM, so I can actually remove the cartridge and play the game just fine. So what happens is when it boots up with a cartridge in the slot, it converts it to a virtual ROM, and that'll remain on the Super Nintendo until I power it off. So it just temporarily saves it until you power off. And as far as the game saves go for cartridge games, those work just like the original 21 games. And if you want to access the original 21 games, you just click on the Classics icon right here. So here is the original 21 games that come pre-installed on the Super Nintendo. And if you want to exit this, you just head back to the Warp Tunnel. Now let's head over to the Hack Chi folder. And as far as how many games you can add, you can pretty much add as many games as you want. If you want the entire Super Nintendo collection, you can add it. If you want the entire Nintendo collection, the entire PC Engine collection, the entire Sega Genesis collection, etc. 
Now for my setup, I did add a couple extra emulators, one for Sega Saturn and one for Dreamcast. But both of these I would consider unplayable, and I just had these on here for testing purposes. For Dreamcast and Sega Saturn, I can get games to load, but they are really, really slow. So let's go old school here and test out an Atari 2600 game. I believe this is Yar's Revenge. This game is really popular back in the day, but I never really was that big a fan. For the Nintendo and Super Nintendo games, there's going to be two different emulators. There's going to be the built-in emulator, then there's also going to be a RetroArch emulator. So for these games, it automatically selects the built-in emulator. And on Nintendo games, that could cause an issue, giving you something that looks black and white like this. But it's an easy fix. All we have to do is exit the game. And when we launch the game, we hold the down button, and then that'll force it to launch with the RetroArch emulator. And for the Super Nintendo games, the same thing. You just hold that down button, and that'll force it to launch with the RetroArch emulator. Now for the Super Nintendo games, you won't have that black and white issue. They will load in color, just like the original Chrono and games but you won't have the RetroArch menu access. And if you're looking to access that RetroArch menu, you just push the start and select button when you're inside of a game. And if you're using a RetroArch based emulator, if you want to exit the game, you push the down and select button at the same time. Now I'm testing out a Nintendo 64 game. This is Ridge Racer. And for the compatibility for Nintendo 64 on the Super Nintendo, it's kind of a hit and miss. I'd say maybe about 30% of the games are playable. And that's just kind of a guess. Now let's take a look inside my PC Engine folder, and I added these ROMs via the ROM folder. I didn't use the hack CE, so doing it this way is kind of a pain. I just wanted to show you it does work along with the folder structure. Now let's check out the settings, so we'll navigate over to the chest icon. And there's quite a few different settings you can play with. The first one is going to be the RetroArch menu. And when we open this up, we can change RetroArch settings, we can load cores, we can load games from here. There's all kinds of stuff we can do inside the RetroArch menu. So for the people out there that's very familiar with RetroArch, this could come in very handy. Another setting inside here is to enable the RetroArch menu. And what that means is when you push the start and select when using a RetroArch emulator, that accesses the RetroArch menu. You can also disable this feature, but I'd recommend just leaving it enabled because it can come in handy. Another very useful setting is being able to use your Super Nintendo controller with Nintendo 64 games. By selecting this with the A button, it'll remap your controller for the Nintendo 64 emulator and make your D-pad function as the analog stick. There's also a setting to repair your flash drive. Sometimes you'll end up with errors, so you can use this feature to try and repair your flash drive. Now I'm going to power down the Super Nintendo and load a Super Famicom cartridge just to show you it works. So that's another very cool feature about this is it's not region locked. You can play Super Nintendo games and Super Famicom games. So I tested about 20 different cartridges and they all seem to work without any issues. Although I do not have any games that have the Super FX chip, so I'm curious if those work just as good. So here's my thoughts on the Classic to Magic. It's a very cool device. It is working as advertised for the most part, but it is a little pricey. It's advertised as plug and play, but I would say there's a little bit more involvement than just plug and play. To me, when it says plug and play, that means you plug it in and it's ready to play. But to be fair, it's pretty easy to set up. And if you're familiar with Hack Chi, then it's gonna be even easier. Another thing that I was really surprised about is that there's not an on off switch for the Classic to Magic itself. So after you turn off the Super Nintendo, the Classic to Magic still remains powered on. And the only way to power it off is to unplug it. But this could be rectified fairly easy by buying a micro USB cable that has an on off switch installed on it. And you can find these pretty cheap on Amazon and eBay, but again, this is a feature that I think should have been included on the Classic to Magic. And right now, this is only currently supported for the Nintendo Classic Editions and Super Nintendo Classic Editions. But how cool would it be if they made an Android app where you could just plug this thing directly into your phone and play your Super Nintendo cartridges? That would be a really cool feature. Or if they can make this thing compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3, that would be even better. Okay, it's time for me to go. Thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. And if you want to help support the channel, you can find me on Facebook and Patreon. Have yourself a great day, and I'll see you next time.